A few months ago, I bought this Dell Latitude E6400 off eBay for $25 plus shipping. If you want to check out the storefront where I got this laptop from, the link to it will be down in the description. Overall, I really liked this Dell Latitude E6400. It's a great business class laptop. Its build quality is excellent. Its 14 inch form factor makes it easy to carry around. The keyboard feels great. The 1280 by 800 display is adequate but the performance was a bit lacking when I tested it with Lubuntu 16.04 in its stock configuration. So what I'm gonna be doing today is I'm gonna take $150 and this is going to include the price of shipping, the price of the laptop, and of course the price of the parts and see if I can't turn this E6400 into a decent daily driver for school and office tasks. So for the drive, I decide to go with a 90 gigabyte solid state drive from KingSpec. A lot of people uh, get on me about using these KingSpec drives because some of them do have a reputation for being pretty unreliable, uh, but I use these a lot and I've never had any issues with them. So until I actually run into a major problem with one of these drives, uh, I'm gonna keep using them. I've, I found them to be okay. I mean, the speeds aren't mind blowing or anything, uh, but they get the job done for a really cheap price. I bought this one for 33 359 off Amazon. Uh, for our RAM, we are using four gigabytes of DDR2 at 800 megahertz. And then for the battery, I bought a uh, Tree NB. It's an aftermarket battery. Nine cells, 7,800 milliamp hour battery for $20.50 and the RAM was $17.96. And then of course for the processor, I decided to go with a T9800. I was gonna go with a T9900, but it was nearly double the price of a T9800 uh, and provided a very, very, very marginal uh, performance increase. And I bought the T9800 for $20.40 off eBay. And all of these items came with free shipping. So let's take all these parts, Toss them into the laptop, install a version of Windows 10 Pro and Ubuntu 16.04 for testing and see what this thing can do. Now, in my last video about this laptop, and if you wanna see the laptop's performance before the upgrade, you should go check that video out. The link will be down in the description. But in the comments section, many of my viewers stated that these latitudes are much easier to service than ThinkPads from the same generation. And being the ThinkPad fan that I am, I had a hard time believing them, but after working on this laptop, I have to say, these latitudes are much easier to service than ThinkPads are. Uh, all I had to do was take off one panel, three screws, and I had access to the CPU, the RAM, um, the hard drive, the entire CPU heatsink. So swapping everything out only took me 15 minutes. Now the benchmarks really are not a good reflection of this system's performance. Just using this for typical day-to-day -day tasks this machine screams. I was surprised. I did not think it would be this responsive, especially with a 64-bit edition of Windows 10 Pro, but it was. Applications opened almost instantly. I popped open Word, PowerPoint. They all opened within a split second. The system itself booted up in under 20 seconds, uh, opening up Google Chrome. Web pages loaded very fast, browsing the web. All the web pages that I went to were uh, extremely responsive, even CNN, which is a surprise because as you guys know, I pick CNN specifically because it is a very taxing website. There's a bunch of scripts and garbage and stuff over the place. Um, and it tends to drag uh, a web browser down, especially if you're browsing the web on an older computer such as this, but this computer did not skip a beat. And even YouTube videos played back at uh, a steady frame rate at 720p. So overall, I was very impressed with this system's performance. This is completely usable as a daily driver. And to push things even further, I decided to run some games on this thing. I mean, it's only equipped with Intel integrated graphics, but even so, it was able to play Portal at a playable frame rate, around uh, 20 to 25 frames per second. It had no problem with Risk of Rain, um, and that's not a very taxing game, so there's no surprise there. Uh, Left 4 Dead, it did struggle a little bit. It's not really running that at a playable frame rate, but then 
again, this isn't intended to be a gaming PC. And of course, I can't leave out all of my fans of Linux. I installed Ubuntu Mate or Mate, however you want to say it. I don't want to get in a big debate right now in the comment section about that. Uh, but I installed Ubuntu Mate slash Mate 16.04 on this machine and performance was pretty much identical to performance on Windows 10. Applications open almost instantly. I think the boot time might be a little bit faster with Ubuntu Mate uh, than it was on Windows 10. We're looking at around 15 to 20 seconds with Ubuntu Mate and web browsing was actually a little bit less responsive on Ubuntu Mate. I think that might be because I was using Firefox. I should have used Chrome just for uh, consistency's sake. The web pages were still navigable and I could browse through websites without an issue. The nice thing about using a Linux distribution like this one in particular is that the uh, operating system's initial footprint is much smaller than that of Windows 10. So we're getting uh, a little extra hard drive space right off the bat. Of course, this is open source and uh, free to download for anyone. And it's a little bit less of a CPU and RAM hog compared to Windows 10. And that brings me to the reason why I did not include the price of the operating system in the budget because that's really up to the user. You might prefer to install a free open source uh, Linux distribution such as Ubuntu Mate, or you might wanna go a different direction and install Windows 10. It really depends on the type of person, the type of workflow, et cetera, et cetera. Not everyone's gonna use Windows. Not everyone's gonna use Linux. It's really up to you. There you go. We put together a great general purpose laptop for around $150. Now, of course, I know I'm gonna get that question where someone's gonna ask, why can't I buy, insert knockoff brand name, uh, laptop from insert uh, Chinese seller here uh, for $150 because they do sell new uh, Intel Atom Cherry Trail laptops um, on some of these Chinese sites for around $150. And what I'm going to say to you is that you're not going to get the same build quality that you are going to get with a business class laptop such as this Dell Latitude E6400. The Dell Latitude E6400 has a roll cage. The materials it's made out of uh, are Excellent. This is a very durable laptop, great keyboard, and you're not going to find the same overall quality in these cheaper laptops that are being sold on these sites. They're just not going to match up. Sure, they might be a little bit lighter um, and the screen resolution might be a little bit higher, but that's really about it. It. It's going to last you maybe a couple months if you're lucky. Yes, I have played around with some of these cheap Chinese laptops. And while they might be good for some people, uh, some people like my mom, that where the laptop just sits around in a house all day and doesn't really go anywhere. Uh, with the laptops I use, I actually take them places. They get thrown into the back of my car, thrown around in a backpack. Uh, and those cheaper laptops made out of those cheaper materials really just don't make the cut. They don't last very long. The keyboards aren't comfortable to type on. The trackpads are usually pretty subpar and overall quality is just lacking. So that's why personally, I would choose to go with a modified business class laptop like this Dell Latitude E6400 that we worked on here today. That is going to be about it for this video. Check the description for a ton of links. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and drop a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to like this video. If you didn't like this video, please tell me why. And of course, please do not forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you want to support me, you can use my Amazon or eBay affiliate links, both of which can be found down in the description. You can also support me by checking out the channel's Patreon page. And of course, please do not forget to drop a like on the Facebook page. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next installment of A Computers and Technology.